Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to keep building our tic-tac-toe game. In the last video, we showed you how to create the rematch and restart buttons. In this lesson, we're going to create a few more buttons which will allow the players to change which player goes first. And so let's get to it. All right, so here we have our project open inside of Unity. And the first thing that we're going to do is create the buttons. Now we're going to have two buttons. The first one is going to be part of the X player icon, which is located right here and the other is going to be part of the O player icon. And so to do this, what we need to do is expand our canvas game object and find the X and O score game objects. And so I'm going to select the X score game object, and you can see that this is the right game object because it has the X icon image attached to it. Now all we have to do is turn this image into a button. And so to do this, we can click on the Add Component drop-down menu, and then if it looks like this. You can just type in button to the search box and it should be the only option available aside from the new script option. And so we're going to select the button component and now we can see within the inspector that there is a button component attached to this game object. Now we can do the same thing to the O score game object. I'm going to select the add component and since we already have searched for the button component all we have to do is select it. The next thing that I'm going to do is select both of these game objects and turn the disabled color to just a solid white. Now that we've attached these components and changed some settings, let's go ahead and open our game controller script in Visual Studios. Once you have your script open inside of Visual Studios, we need to create two variables to hold these newly created button components. And so I'm going to type public and then button is the data type with the capital B and then this first one is going to be called X players button. The next variable is also a public button but this one is going to be called O players button. Once you have these variables created let's go ahead and create the function that we will use for the on click of these buttons and so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to create this function and this function is going to be a public function so that we can access it with our buttons. And then it's going to be of return type void and we can call it switch player. Now there is going to be one parameter for this function and it's going to be of type int. And we can just call this which player. And then going to add some curly braces. Now once we pair this function to the two different buttons, the buttons themselves will pass in a value to the which player parameter, and that value is either going to be a 0 for the x player or a 1 for the o player. And so we can go ahead and create two if statements checking to see whether which player is a 0 or a 1. And so I'm going to type if which player equals 0, and then parentheses, and I'm just going to go ahead and create the else if which player equals 1. Now the first thing that we want to do inside these if statements is update the whose turn variable. And so if which player equals 0, that means we want to switch to the x player's turn. And so we want to set the whose turn variable equal to 0. And so I'm going to type whose turn equals 0. In the else if which player equals 1, we want to do the opposite. We want to say whose turn equals 1. The next thing that we want to do is update the turn icons array so that it displays the right person's turn. And so if which player equals 0, that means it's the x player's turn, which means that we want to say turn icons square bracket 0 dot set active and then say true and we want to set the second element which is turn icons square brackets one we want to set this one to false so set active parentheses false now inside the else if which player turn equals one we want to do the exact opposite so turn icons square brackets zero dot set active parentheses false and then turn icon square brackets one dot set active parentheses true. Now I believe that's everything that we need for this function because really our whole game is based around the whose turn variable. 
If the who's turn variable equals zero, then our whole game is going to behave as if it's the x player's turn. Whereas if the who's turn variable equals one, it's going to behave as if it's the o player's turn. Now the last thing that we need to do is make sure that the players can't change whose turn it is in the middle of a game. And so what we're going to do is disable these buttons if it's the middle of a game. And if it's the beginning of the game, then we're going to make sure that the buttons are enabled. So to disable these buttons, all we have to do is go up to the tic-tac-toe button function because we know that if the tic-tac-toe button function is called, that means a player has marked a space, which means that our game is mid-session. And so at the top or at the bottom of this function, we can add the line xplayerButton.interactable equals false. And then we want to do the same thing for the o player button dot interactable equals false. Now to enable these buttons, we know that when the application is first opened, the buttons will already be interactable. So we don't have to worry about the start function. And so within the rematch function, we can add the opposite of those two lines that we just entered. We can say x player button dot interactable equals true and then o player button dot interactable equals true. Now that should be everything that we need to do for this script. Let's go ahead and save it and then go back to Unity. Once you're back inside of Unity, we need to apply this switch player function to the on click of these two buttons. So I'm going to click this plus sign and then I'm going to grab our game controller and drag it into this field here. I'm then going to use the drop down menu, go to game controller and then I'm going to find our switch player with the int parameter, so right here. We can then assign a static value for the parameter that's going to be passed into this function. And so for the O player score, we need to make sure that this parameter is equal to one. Now let's select the X score game object and do the same thing. I'm gonna click the plus sign. I'm then going to drag the game controller into this field here. I'm then going to use the drop down menu to select game controller and then switch player int. I'm then going to leave the parameter at zero because that's the parameter for the X player. The other thing that we need to do before we test our game is set the button variables that we created. So I'm going to select our game controller, scroll down to our X players button and our O player button, and I'm going to select the X score game object, drag it into the X player button. I'm then going to grab the O score game object and drag it into the O players button. Now we can go ahead and test our game. So right now you can see that it is the X player's turn indicated by this little dot icon here. But if I were to click on the O player icon, you can see how that dot switches over to the O player side. And now when I click one of the buttons of our tic-tac-toe grid, you can see that the first mark placed is the O icon and then it switches back over to the X player's turn and the second mark is an X. And so that seems to be working properly. The other feature that we coded in is to make sure that the players can't switch whose turn it is in the middle of the game. And so right now you can see that if I click on the X icon, it's not switching whose turn it is because that's not allowed. But if I were to hit the rematch button, it then goes back to the X player's turn and you can see that the buttons are now working once again. I can switch back over to the O player's turn, and from the O player's turn, I can also switch back over to the X player's turn. And so let's say you're playing one game and it's the X player's turn, and you have the X player win, and then you want to rematch, but you want to have the O player start because the X player started the last game. Then all you have to do is click on the O player's icon and it switches over to the O player's turn. So that's pretty handy and really cool. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson for switching whose turn it is to start a game of tic-tac-toe. I hope you were able to follow along and that everything made sense. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular updates when we publish new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.